Welcome to this guide to help you get started in Twisted 1.18. In this video, we will cover everything you need to know about in Twisted by providing helpful tips, advice, and clearing common misconceptions. This is an updated version of my previous beginner's guide video, which was for version 1.17. As always, timestamps will be in the description below in case you want to get to certain pieces of information. For those who haven't even touched or heard the game yet, Twist is a game about storm chasing. This means you are tasked with chasing tornadic storms in the fictional midwestern state called Kisoda. Each storm is different, bringing different kinds of tornadoes that vary in strength, shape, and size. Vehicles are your best friend in the game, as you will be driving for most of the time. There is a good assortment of vehicles to choose from, and it might be a bit overwhelming on which ones you want to choose. Right now, we're only going to focus on the dealership vehicles. The first car you will get is a Chevy 454 SS, which is free. This will serve as a good starting point, it has a top speed of 90 miles an hour, and you are able to purchase both a mezzanet and a lift kit for it. We'll get to what those are in a bit. After working up some cash, you now have some choices to make. This is where you can branch out into different paths for your next vehicles. It's up to you how you want to go, and you don't have to follow this tree, but it's what I recommend. If you want to take the top route, go for the Subaru Forester, or alternatively, if you bought the Starter Pack Game Pass, the Ford Expedition. These are both very good mid-tier dealership cars. The Forester has a top speed of 100 miles an hour, while the Expedition has a top speed of 90 miles an hour. They both have mezzanets available to purchase. Next, you have another choice. If you want to stay faster on roads, go for the Dodge Charger. This is the fastest car in the game, which has a top speed of 125 miles an hour. The Charger only has a mezzanet available to purchase. If you want to go fast on dirt roads, go buy one of the three trucks, being the Toyota Tundra, Ford F-150, and Chevy Silverado. These trucks, when a lift kit is equipped, are the fastest dirt road vehicles in the game, going 85 miles an hour on dirt roads. After this, you should reach your first chaser vehicle, which should be the Dominator 1. We'll explain these later as well. If you want to take the bottom route, you would want to start off with the Toyota Tundra. This route is better if you prefer driving on dirt roads. Just make sure you have a lift kit equipped. Now, about what mezzanets and lift kits are. These are modifications that you can apply to your cars. To do so, go to the dealership, click on your car, click garage, and click purchase on the one you want on the bottom right. Then, click equip to put them onto your vehicle. Mesonets are a device that reads the wind speeds around you, which is super useful for letting you know if you're about to be picked up by a tornado. It is also a method of gaining money. Lift kits are an attachment that you can equip on trucks, which will let you drive faster on dirt roads. These are incredibly useful because dirt roads can serve as good shortcuts. While on the topic of road surfaces, I want to mention that you should try to stick to roads. It is not a good idea to drive on grass, because in all vehicles you are very slow in doing so. This can be dangerous because if you cut across a field with a tornado right behind you, it will catch up to you. A lot of new players make this mistake and end up dying. You should also use dirt roads as a last resort, or a shortcut if you know you're going to make it in time. Vehicles without a lift kit do lose a good portion of their speed when on dirt roads, so make sure you know what you're doing. Moving past that, let's get to the best of the vehicles in the game, the chaser vehicles. These vehicles are built for storm chasing, with some of these able to go inside tornadoes. I'm only going to briefly go over these as they're fairly new to the game. You can find these in the warehouse section. Regular vehicles get completely swept off the ground at 95 miles an hour, but these vehicles are much stronger. The first chaser vehicle you should be buying, the Dominator 1, has an undeployed wind threshold of 130 miles an hour. When deployed, it can withstand up to 170 miles an hour. This vehicle is incredibly useful and will hold up for a while. Briefly covering the rest of the chaser vehicles, you have the Doghouse. This is a low-end chaser, which is a vehicle used more for probing. As of now, it's just like a regular vehicle. In the future, it will get more functionality. Next, you have the rest of the Dominators, those being Dominator 2 and Dominator 3. The Dominator vehicles are great, because they can deploy quickly. Besides that, you have the TIV-1 and TIV-2. The TIV-2 is the strongest interceptor in the game, which can withstand winds that reach 220 miles an hour. There is a trade-off with that, which is its slow deploy time. And finally, we have the DAO, or Doppler on wheels. 
This vehicle is a supporting vehicle that sits in the background providing helpful data for everyone. If you want to learn about each vehicle in depth, I have plans to make detailed sub-guides on specific topics, so stay tuned for that. For new players, gaining money can be confusing, but it's quite easy once you know what you're doing. There are six ways of getting money, those being probes, mezzanet wins, driving, cutting trees, working jobs, and tending wounded. Probes are the most rewarding method of cash gain, only if done correctly though. To get a probe, you have to go to the warehouse and click the probes tab at the bottom right of your screen. There are three probes, being probe 1, probe 2, and probe 3. All probes reward the same amount of cash and they're all the same functionally. Probe 2 and 3 have cameras, while probe 1 does not have one. You can hold up to three of any probe in your inventory at a time. Once you have your probe set, head out to a tornado. When you are in the path of one, click to drop the probe down. You want a direct hit in order to get the best data and cash possible. Here are a few tricks to make sure your probes will reward you as much cash as they can. Keep an eye on the tornado. If it's moving left or right, it's heading away from you. If it's not moving getting bigger, it's coming directly for you. Check your radar too! The warning polygons can be pretty useful for showing its direction. You also want to make sure the tornado be strong enough to give you enough cash to pay back the probes. If the TVS is green or yellow, it would be best to hold off until it strengthens to orange, red, or pink. This is because once a probe starts to make money, and you pick it up, you'll have to rebuy it. This does not apply to probes that didn't make any money. As it's gaining money, you can click the probe button at the bottom of your screen to see the wins it's currently reading, the highest to red, the amount of money it made, as well as the camera's perspective. Mezzanets are a high risk, high reward method of gaining cash. When you read wins in excess of 60 miles an hour, you will start to earn cash. Be very careful when you're doing this, because if you get too close to a stronger tornado, your car will start to slide and you may get picked up. These are much more efficiently used on the dedicated chaser vehicles in the warehouse section, due to them being able to withstand very high wind speeds. Driving is the simplest of them all, it's self-explanatory. As you drive, you'll be rewarded a small sum of cash. While it is small, you drive a lot in this game so that little amount adds up to be pretty large. Cutting trees is an underutilized method of gaining money. In order to do this, you need the chainsaw game pass which is 150 robux. Tornadoes commonly knock down trees, and oftentimes these trees land in the road and block it. You can use a trusty chainsaw to chop them up and gain some cash for doing so. If you are in a forest, you'll make a decent amount of cash for doing this. In 1.18, jobs are added. Currently, you can only work at Siriway, but more businesses will be made available to work at in the future. When you step inside Siriway, you are immediately considered a worker. A customer will walk up to the counter and ask you for what they want. You have to click the ingredients on the screen in front of you and then click finish order. Then you have to grab the items behind you and make the food by placing it in the microwave. Click on the customer who wanted the order and they will disappear. This will reward you money and is a very good way to earn a quick buck between storms. Finally, we have healing the wounded. This is only possible through the EMS pass, which can be purchased for 300 Robux. When a violent tornado hits a town, wounded NPCs with varying amounts of health will spawn. It is up to you to help revive them or cover the dead bodies up. Saving an NPC will result in a bit of cash, while dead ones do not. Your thermodynamics are very important to look at. These values will help you determine what kind of storms you'll get and how strong they'll be. At the top of your thermodynamics, you'll see a bar that tells you what today's risk is. This is a leveled system that gives you a rough idea on the severity of the storms. There are six levels, being thunderstorm, marginal, slight, enhanced, moderate, and high. High risk today's are the most dangerous, as they spawn the biggest and the baddest of tornadoes. At the left side, you have the wind direction. This is good to look at to see the motion of the storms for the day. To the right, you have the main values. These will tell you everything about the storms for the day. The temperature and dew point determine what your humidity percentage will be. Your humidity corresponds to how much rain you will get. If the value is within 60% or lower, you will get lower precipitation storms. This is good because you have much better visibility in the storm, which will be easier to see the tornado. If the value is higher than 70%, you'll get high precipitation storms. The rain in these storms get really thick and can obscure the tornado, making it pretty hard to see. Lapse rate determines how big the hail will be and the frequency of lightning. Cape is the big one that everyone likes to pay attention to. The cape value is how quickly the storms form and how strong they'll be. 
The higher this number is, the crazier these storms can get. In order for the best storm performance, you want these numbers to be balanced out and within the same color range. If the color range difference is too significant, for example a green lapse rate and a red cape, this could choke the storm performance, making them not as good as they should be. Don't let the lower risk or choke days discourage you from playing though. These are actually my personal favorite kinds of days as they balance smaller, photogenic tornadoes and scary, violent tornadoes. You are also guaranteed several tornadoes each day, so getting a thunderstorm risk does not mean you're missing tornadoes. The radar is our most important tool in Twisted. The radar can tell you a lot about the storms and show road layouts and useful landmarks to help you navigate through Kisoda. Starting off, we're going to explain the icons on the radar screen. Introduced in 1.18, a map legend was added at the bottom right. This is useful to help you understand what each of these icons mean. The first page of the legend shows the different radar reflectivity colors of rain and hail. The deeper the color, the thicker it is. These deeper colors can also appear when a town is being hit, which is called a debris ball. This is because the debris gets sent high into the air, which causes the radar to see it. On the next page, we have tornado symbology. The text explains it pretty well. The rotation means that there is a mesocyclone spinning and a tornado is imminent. The color triangles are the TVS, which stands for Tornado Vortex Signature. These give you a rough idea of the tornado's wind speeds, and it shows what they are here. Red and pink TVS tornadoes are incredibly dangerous, so be careful around them. The third page are just other general symbols. These are good symbols to know as they do tell you some pretty useful information. The lightning icon is good to see how frequent lightning strikes are within the storm. The hail symbol shows what the hail icon is, and by looking at it you can tell how big the hail is within the storm. The gas station icon tells you where all the gas stations are located in the map. At gas stations, you can obviously refill cars, but also you can buy food to heal yourself. When you take damage, your screen will get blurrier the lower your health is, and it might get annoying being unable to see. To fix this, you can walk up to the counter and purchase food to eat, which will heal you. Not only that, but you can buy gas cans to take with you, in case you need fuel when you're out in the middle of nowhere as well as a flashlight to help you illuminate dark areas when you're not in your car. The probe icon tells you where you have placed your probes. The house icon shows you where your own home is at. The storm shelter symbol shows you all the community shelter locations, which can be useful to know in case you have to hide from a very dangerous tornado. Beyond the map legend symbols, we have warning polygons. Yellow warning polygons are severe thunderstorm warnings. These are issued when there is hail with a diameter of 1 inches or more. Red warning polygons are general tornado warnings. They appear when there is a rotation all the way up to orange TVS tornadoes. PDS and tornado emergency polygons are both pink, but mean different things. PDS polygons, which stands for particularly dangerous situation, are issued when a red or pink TVS tornado is present. These look like a pink box. Tornado emergency polygons are a bit different. They are issued when a red or pink TVS tornado is in the path of a highly populated area. The areas that they get warned for are Hibbing, Hazleton, Wadena, and Chandler. If you see these pink boxes with a black line in them, be very careful because a lot of destruction is about to occur. You can also right click these polygons to see EAS information, which gives a quick warning synopsis. With that out the way, we should briefly cover radar functions. On the bottom left of your radar, you have a panel displaying a bunch of information. At the top of that, you have your time of day and the seconds till radar update. Below that are the map markers. This allows you to toggle on and off different icons on the radar, in case you want a cleaner look. The highlight player tool is pretty simple, but very useful. To use it, you click highlight player, and then the username of the player you want to see. This will bring the radar to where the player is, which is good to see where your friends are at. The measurement tool is a tool to measure distance between things. To use it, click between two points. This is good for trying to measure total tornado width, or just to see how large things are. And finally, we have tornado tracks. With this, you can see all the tornado paths that happened in the entire server. To use it, you click on the button, click the day you want to see, and which tornado of the day. This will bring the path up, which you can use to see how large the tornado was. If you hover your mouse over a path, it shows how big the funnel was, as well as how long the tornado tracked for. Now that you're familiar with the icon symbology, let's talk about storm structures on radar. When these storms form, they start off as small blobs, but will eventually grow into a full-blown supercell. 
Pay attention to the structure as it develops, because there are clues that will tell you where the tornado is going to be. The last part that gets created is the hook echo, where the storm sort of hooks around. This is a real thing that occurs, and is the signature of a tornado. Hook echoes are always on the southwestern corner of storms, no matter the wind direction. If you catch these early, you can position yourself in front of it, ready to get an early intercept. I'll leave a few examples on screen for you to see. The storm structures do change depending on the wind direction for the day, but remember, hooks are always there. In order to classify what a tornado is on the EF scale, you'll need damage to support the claims. Different wind speeds result in different kinds of damage for each structure. This can get a little complicated, but I will help explain the best information to keep in mind. One really good and easy way of interpreting damage is through the newly introduced National Weather Service Game Pass, which costs 650 Robux. A good feature of this pass is damage assessment. With this, you can officially rate a damage structure for the entire lobby to see. It's very simple, all you have to do is take out your clipboard and walk up to a damage structure. You then press E to open up a menu. Through this menu, you will pick the description that best fits the damage you see on the structure. Once picked, it will show up on the map for all players, highlighting what got hit and how strong the damage is. You are unable to rate it too far off, so don't be afraid if you're going to rate it too far away from what it is. Another way is just remembering certain damage indicators. This one takes a bit more effort, but there are always key indicators that can easily tell you the strength. Trees are the easiest to remember. Tornadoes start to get into the violent range when they debark trees, and when that happens the tornado is rated as EF3. Houses are also a really good, easy way to tell indicators of damage. We'll start with the weakest kinds of homes, mobile homes. These are mostly found in towns like Naville and Angora. There are two levels of mobile homes, being lower bound and expected. The lower bound homes are lifted up by concrete bricks, and when they are completely swept away, it's an indicator of an EF1. The expected mobile homes have a better foundation, and when they're completely swept away, it means it's EF2. For the big homes, these are your lower bound homes. They get slabbed, meaning nothing is left but the concrete slab of the foundation, at 165 miles an hour. These are your expected homes, which get slabbed at 200 miles an hour winds. And finally, you have your upper bound homes. These are the toughest of the houses, getting slabbed at 220 miles an hour winds. Now, in order to rate the tornado the highest possible rating of EF5, you're going to need to look out for these few damage indicators. All upper bound homes completely slabbed, when Wilmar is completely gone, when the low rise city buildings are down to one story, and when mid rise buildings are down to just two stories. These are very rare to get, but once you do get these indicators, you've gotten a monster of a tornado. As with many other Roblox games, you have Game Passes. Game Passes are like paid DLC, which help add new ways to experience the game. Twisted currently has 8 Game Passes, those being Infinite Fuel, Double Income, Starter Pack, Custom Vehicle Colors, Chainsaw, Skyworn Spotter, Fire and EMS, and National Weather Service. The Infinite Fuel Game Pass is pretty self-explanatory. With this Game Pass, your fuel never goes down. This is great if you don't want to constantly refill your cars, or you're just lazy. Double income as well explains itself. All the cash you earn is now doubled, which is very useful. This is the game pass you should 100% get if you're considering spending robux on this game. The starter pack is a pretty solid game pass, especially to new players. When purchasing this game pass, you are granted $10,000 and a Ford Expedition with a Mezzonet. This will put you ahead of the game over other new players. The custom vehicle colors pass is a very simple game pass. This game pass allows you to play around with RGB sliders to get the exact shade you want. This isn't necessary, but a nice feature to have. The chainsaw game pass grants you a chainsaw that you can use to cut down trees that have fallen over, or chase other people around. Whichever you choose is up to you. You also earn money for cutting up trees, which is good to have. The Skyworn Spotter Pass allows you to become a weather spotter, where you can report different kinds of tornadoes, damage, and hail. All reports will be displayed on the radar for everyone to see, and are incredibly useful for National Weather Service workers. This is more so a roleplay pass currently. The Fire and EMS Game Pass is a completely new way to play Twisted. 
Instead of being a storm chaser, you take the role of a first responder. When a strong tornado hits a town, wounded or dead NPCs will spawn. As an EMS, you have to take care of the wounded NPCs or bag up the dead ones. Doing so should grant you a little bit of money. And finally, we have the National Weather Service Game Pass. This is the newest Game Pass and it also changes the way you play. You can choose to either work at the National Weather Service which is located just east of Hazleton or assess damage. If you want to be inside the station, you can warn tornadoes. Hop in the office key in the basement and draw out polygons. If you choose to assess damage, you can use a clipboard to rate damaged structures. And that's all we have to talk about Twisted. As I said earlier, I do have plans to make smaller sub-guides, which goes way more in depth about the many aspects of this game. If you have any more questions about the game, let me know in the comments down below. I'm always happy to help. And with that out the way, see you guys next video.